Hey, it's BT. I'm going to review the San Marino GP. Let's get down to it. Um, man, well, first of all, I, am, I felt like I crap, man, because I have not. I, I don't know what it is. I can't stay up as late as I can trying to watch these races. My voice is gone. Um, anyway, um, let's start with Moto3, man. Moto3, this is going to be real quick. Moto3, it's done. 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 Brad Bender is a man among boys. He really is. That race, as the only time Moto Three, it was kind of it's kind of boring a little bit, a little bit. I mean, it happens. It happens. It's not those kids' fault. Man, they do the best they can, but it happens. Um, Brad Bender, man, like I said, man among boys, and the, and the new phrase is a master class, and that's exactly what Brad did. Brad, here's Brad. Brad was playing cat and mouse. It was like. Rawr, rawr, rawr. I can't believe I just did a cat noise. Anyway, that's what he did. He was playing cat and mouse with those kids. It was like he like he was behind. Uh, Anaya was behind him, and he goes, "You know what, Anaya? Here, I know I'm in Italy. These are your people. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna let you pass me, and then I'm gonna just sit back and see what goes on." And he actually kind of said that. He said when Anaya passed him, he goes, "You know, I know the pace dropped a little because Anaya was struggling to keep up. It was like, you know, it was like it was like uh, if you're a regular person trying to run with a Kenyan." In a, in a marathon, you're going, <laughs> I mean, you're keeping up, but you're going, how fast can these guys actually run? This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And that's what it was like. Bender, if you watched the qualifying or, or the, the, the uh, free practice, I think, three, when Bender was just, just running through those laps and everybody else was struggling to keep up, even though uh, I think Mir uh, set, the, uh, set the pole record. Remember, he ran off track after he said it. It was like, I did it. I beat you. And then he, then he ran off course. That's what it was, man. Bender was just smooth. He was like, like I said, a hot knife through butter. He was just smooth. Everybody else was struggling uh, to stay with him. Anaya struggled, even though he was he he um he passed him. You could tell he was struggling. And like and like Brad Bender said, he let him pass him pretty much. And he noticed the pace dropped, and he's like, okay. And then at the very end, I guess he goes, you know what? I guess he was on his cell phone, going, okay, I gotta call my mom, gotta pick up some groceries, gotta pick some broccoli. Oh, oh, last lap. Oh, turn 10. Okay, got to go. Boom. And he just passed him. It was done. It was done. There was no question Brad Bender was going to win that race. Masterclass by him. Cat and mouse all the way. Brad Bender is the man. He will be the Moto3 champion. And good for him. He's a good dude. So anyway, let's go to Moto2. Moto2 actually was almost the best race of the weekend. And, man, let me tell you something. Props to uh, uh, Baldessari. Baldessari. Lorenzo Baldessari. Had his uh his stars and stripes for uh, America in um uh, in um dedication to it nine eleven I thought that was cool man and I thought Baldessari ran a great way. he's one of the few people that like you know when they go to their home race there's a lot of pressure I'm sure people are there their daddy's there their mama's there you you want to do really well and they don't do well Baldessari always does well on his home track he did well in Mugello and he did well there. Great race, but he got to get to Alex. Remember, I said Alex Rins doesn't get dirty. Oh, he got dirty. He had a bad collarbone. He tried to stay. And that was a great race, and um, and he followed by the sorry. And I think by the sorry, uh, I, mean, he, I don't think he did it on purpose, but he cut that throttle, and Rins wasn't expecting. Almost hit him, so he had to go wide. Uh, great race. Alex Rins got my respect though. That guy was hurting. He still has a broken collarbone. And he still raced him hard. He went out, got the lead. He got dirty, man. I like when somebody get dirty. I like when he get a little dirty. He got a little dirty, and he won the race. Great race. And uh, and I'm uh, uh, no no one ever. Uh, I never give a Naka uh, not Nakasaki. I never give him credit. Then all right, that's got to be right. Anyway, I never give him credit. I think he had a great race. Him and also uh, um, Renz had a great race. Lowe's, I wanted Lowe's to do well. I kind of wanted Lowe's to get dirty with uh, with Zarco for a low. I kind of wanted him to uh, take Zarco high. I, not, not to hurt him, but just, you know, I like Zarco. I like tight shoes, but, you know, just for what happened in Silverstone. Because he kind of he kind of didn't apologize in a way Zarco didn't. And I thought, I know he and Lowe's were kind of going back and forth. And Lowe's basically said, goody. When they when they penalized him 30, 30 seconds, they go, goody, that's what you get. So I kind of wanted him to do something, but... Lowe's lost it. Lowe's did a great job of holding it together. He kind of knew it was coming. When he went in that one turn, and he lost, you're like, oh, boy, this ain't going to be pretty. So I thought it was a, thought it was a good race. I thought Moto2 kind of stole the show. Great racing from those guys. Props to Balasari. He deserved that win in Italy. Man, is going to be a great racer. Good for him. Good for Morbidelli. Morbidelli got a little dirty. I like Morbidelli. Morbidelli, I predict next year going to be in the title hunt. He's a good racer. He just needs that win. After that win... I think it. I think it'll start coming for him. So anyway, props to those guys. Move on to MotoGP. GP. 
man, um, I thought the whole weekend, I kind of thought Lorenzo was going to take it because Lorenzo looked good in uh, qualifying. He looked good and everything else. Um, and I, I looked at uh, Marquez. I thought Marquez might. I kind of thought Marquez was just a little, just a tad bit off. A tad bit off, and I thought Rossi at his home race was going to win it. I thought when he first started out, I thought it was going to be. I thought it was a great race. Um, I thought I was I wanted to be a little bit closer in the beginning, a little bit closer. I was, I was glad uh, Maverick was there. Let me tell you something: Maverick Vinales and Andreas Iannone are going to be the deciding factors, and maybe, maybe, maybe Cal Crusher will be the deciding factors in the championship because. They're the, they're like the variable man. I mean, I, if you used to be the top three, it'd be Lorenzo, Rossi, Marquez, and maybe Pedrosa. But I tell you what, with Maverick finally coming up, Crutchlow having great uh, the, that confidence he's had, and uh, unfortunately, you know, he couldn't race this week. And I hope he hope he feels better. I hope Crazy Joe gets better. But those guys are going to be, uh, um, especially I think Vinales, because Vinales is with Suzuki, so he really didn't have um, a hand in the fight. Whereas Crutchlow is with Honda, so you kind of think maybe, maybe not really uh, team orders, but you know they're both Honda. So okay, Crutchlow, don't race Mark hard if uh, if it comes down to it. Mark needs his win, and Crutchlow will be like, okay, you know. So I really think honestly that. Um, that it's going to be interesting to see how Maverick responds and how Iannone responds, or if they go with their countrymen. Say what you want. I kind of think maybe the Italians, you see what they did for Rossi and Valencia, everybody moved over, remember? And Rossi started the very last of the grid in Valencia, and Pedro and Pedrucci just go, there you go, Rossi. Remember, he goes, there you go. He looked back and go, there you go. He just gave it to him on a silver platter. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I thought the race was a good race. Um... I tell you what, no one talks about this, and everybody's kind of letting it slide, but man, what's happened to Marquez? I mean, he, he's gaining points, but it's got to be frustrating. He's got to be hearing the whispers like, hmm. I mean, Crutchlow's ran great on that Honda, and the Pedrosa ran great on that Honda. And Marquez kind of like, mm. I mean, he had the great hit. He had the tire choice he wanted. And if you and if you look and listen to his post race press conference, he's kind of like, hmm. I mean, he kinda, I think he's feeling that pressure. Marquez wants to win. He's a winner. He likes to win. He's an aggressive rider, and he really didn't get a chance to do what he really wanted to do. And he got the tire choice he wanted. I don't think he liked Mazzano as a track, and uh, I don't know. I think it, I think it's it, 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 it's 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 needling at him. You know, it's like a little chihuahua that it kind of like bites at your ankle. Like, arr, 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 arr. And he's like, hey, 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 off me, dog. That's what it is. I think Marquez wants to win and the bite, and he's not really performing like he wants to. He wants to win. He wants to show I'm a winner instead of getting about the points that he's doing. I think it's starting to get to him. You kind of see it in his face. So, Aragon, 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 tomato, tomato. Anyway, I think Aragon, you're going to see a, a different Marquez. I think Marquez is either going to win it in Aragon or he's going to bend it. One of the two. I think he's feeling that pressure. And even though he's got the, the lead and everything, you feel Rossi just kind of chip, 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 chip away. So I think Marquez and Aragon is just going to go it just balls out old Marquez. I think that's just going to happen. Anyway. Props to Danny Pedrosa, man. You can't help but Danny. It's like it's like that kid you always root for, but something always happened. Maybe I don't know. He fell down the step. Whatever, man. He's like that kid you just can't help but root for. Like, oh, way to go, little Danny. You just want to paint his little cheeks. You know, basically, he got beat by a basically Ross got beat by a sixth grader. That's what it's like. Danny Pedrosa was like what four eight. I mean, he got beat by a sixth grader. That's what it was like. And you love, and everybody loves Danny Pedrosa, man. I mean, we talked, I'm not going to lie, I'll talk to a little crap about it, only because he wasn't winning. Like, how did he resign with Honda? And he won that race. It was beautiful. He rode a great race. Props to Danny. He picked him off. It just, bump, yeah, bump, 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 bump. How he got Lorenzo. How he got Ross. And he stood Rossi up, which I thought was great. We're going to get to the post-press conference, where I thought was interesting, right? Uh, they asked Lorenzo what he thought about the race, and he kind of thought, and he said, I kind of thought the move that Rossi made on me was kind of aggressive. That's all he said. In my opinion, it was kind of aggressive. And Rossi laughed. And then Rossi came back. You got to see the post-race press conference. Rossi, as my mama would say, showed his ass. Remember, he was like, oh, he's getting laughed at him. I'm like, really? You think I'm aggressive? How about the move you put on me in Silverstone and the other races? How about that? He kind of got black with him. Oh, how about that race, huh? How about the other race? How about the other week? And, and Lorenzo was like, what race? And he was like, uh, I don't know which race it was, but you know what you did. And Lorenzo goes, what race? He goes, I don't know, but you know what you did. And I watched the race again, and I saw the pass... I didn't think Rossi was very aggressive. I thought it was just a nice little pass. Um, he did, he did, 
He stood him up, but only because Lorenzo had to come back in the racing line, and he stood up. But Rossi, it wasn't, really wasn't dirty. I watched it over and over again. It really wasn't a dirty move. Lorenzo thought it was, but I didn't think it was. I thought Pedrosa's move on Rossi was kind of like really aggressive, but Rossi didn't bitch about it. And I'm sure people are going to take sides and, and that Rossi, I mean, that uh, Lorenzo was bitching and man up or whatever. That's just his opinion. Um, if you watched the, the after the race conference, uh, Lorenzo said, he goes, hey, man, you know, I had the right tire choice. I want it. Rossi and Pedrosa were just faster than me. That's all there is. And uh, he said that. And I thought that was, uh, I don't know. I just, you know, it's like that press conference, it was like uh, a marriage just can't wait for the kid to graduate. And that hit Basically, Rossi and Lorenzo in that press conference, the way they were situated, Danny was in the middle. It was like those two were married, and Danny was the kid in the middle going, are mommy and daddy fighting? What are mommy and daddy fighting about? It reminded me of me being around in my at growing up. My parents hated each other. And they couldn't wait for us to graduate. So they get divorced. That's what that's like, man. They can't wait to leave. It, it's it was kind of funny. I think Rossi because he was in Mazzano, he was a little more cockier than usual. If you watched, he was like he said what he said, and he went. There's nothing more annoying than when you feel like everybody's against you and you just give your personal opinion and you try to be nice about it and everybody else is on it's on somebody else's side and the other person like yeah how about that take that. There's nothing more annoying than that. And I just felt that, um, you know, they booed him on the stand. I felt bad, man. Those people, the Italians, you got to love them. But, uh, you know, the, it, it, that passion and I don't know. I don't know. I just think that that was kind of classless by booing Lorenzo and the press conference or something else. But hey, man, don't take away the fact Danny Pedrosa kicked all their ass. I think Marquez finished nine, nine seconds behind. Damn. Like I said, Marquez is feeling that pressure. He's feeling that heat, baby. Feeling that heat. So, rider of the race, got to go Danny Pedrosa, man. Little Danny did it. Little sixth grader did it, man. And you just want to pinch his cheeks. Where'd he go, little Danny? Everybody loves Danny, man. So, good for Danny. He won the race. Marquez, I predict, it was every guy, he's going to come out. Guns are blazing. You watch. Uh, Lorenzo and Rossi, oh, it just gets better and better. Uh, there's going to be no team orders. Nobody's going to help anybody else. It's going to be great. You got to love MotoGP. Eight different winners. You got to love this, man. We are definitely in the golden age. And the one thing that pissed me off about that race was when they said somebody, everybody was exceeding track limits, they had to go back a place. Was that not annoying? They got on my damn nerves. Cal Crustle was in was in the winner's lane for the independent riders. He basically was popping bottles, you know, celebrating, you know, spraying champagne. They go, hey, 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 hey. Give that champagne back. You exceeded track limits. By the way, it's Paul Spargo. He had to give it up, and Paul Spargo took the place over a crush low. It just got annoying, man. I know you got to do what you got to do, but sometimes you go, really? It's like this much. You gonna really? That was track limits? Really? Really? I thought it was kind of chicken shit, but anyway. Prof Danny Pedrosa, he was the rider of the race. Prof to Lorenzo Baldessari. He gets second up for uh, one of the race. Overall master class, you got to give it to Brad Bender, man. As much as I love Danny Pedrosa, Brad Bender is the toast, man. Congratulations. He will be Moto3 champion. Um, anyway, I got to go. I thought the re overall racing was okay. It was just okay. I thought it was okay. For some reason, I don't know. I didn't feel that. I thought Silverstone was better racing. I thought Silverstone was better overall weekend. But it was good. Mazzano, good to see the passion of the Italian people, even though they did boo Lorenzo. So, damn, this went way longer than I wanted to. All right, anyway, thanks, you guys, for watching. And let's do this again in two weeks. Aragon, I predict Mark Marquez already. I predict Mark Marquez. All right, talk to you guys later. Until then, peace.